Hello, friends, and welcome to one of our Bethel Church's home groups. We are so excited to have you with us tonight as we continue in our series called In the Steps of Jesus. You know, for the last couple of months, we have been studying the book of Mark and looking at the life of Jesus. We have been learning how Jesus lived and walked every day while he was here on this earth. You know, it's a very powerful thing to walk in the steps of Jesus and to learn from him, to learn from his life, to, you know, study and learn from his words, to look and learn and study his actions while he was here on earth. As a matter of fact, the more we study Jesus and look at his examples for us, the more we discover how we should live, how we should talk, how we should act. Jesus was perfect. And if we want to be great in this life, then we need to study the only one who lived the perfect life, which was Jesus. And so tonight, we're going to jump into the next chapter, which is Mark chapter 15. In this chapter of Mark, everything that Jesus has planned for is finally going to come to pass. It is in this part of the story that Jesus is going to die. He's going to hang on the cross for our sins. Jesus will be put on trial. He will be falsely accused and lied about. He will be mocked. He will be beaten. And Jesus will be whipped and crucified for all of the world to see. Mark 15 verse 24 says this, And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. And the written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. Verse 27, They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him. You know, as we're studying the life of Jesus, I want to remind everyone that Christ came to this earth for one reason, and that was to give his life as a ransom for you and for me, for all of us. This was his purpose in life, to die so that you and I could live. Jesus, the one who was perfect, was about to give all of us the most perfect gift ever. This was Jesus' masterpiece. This is why he came down from heaven. This was the moment that he had been waiting for. Jesus, the Son of God, was going to set the ultimate example for us. He would lay down his life so that you and I could be saved. Wow. And I believe that there are some very important truths that we can learn from his death. See, up until now in this series, we have studied and we have looked at, you know, everyday life of Jesus, how he lived. But tonight I want to focus for a few moments on how he died and the events of this day on the cross. You know, it might sound backwards when I say this, but one of the greatest examples of how we should live can be seen in how Jesus died. There's a lot for us to learn here from Jesus' death. His death was so powerful that it made a great impact on everyone who was watching him that day. Jesus was dying and it made an impact, especially with a Roman soldier, a centurion. Look what it says in verse 39. I, I don't want to miss this part of the story. In Mark 15, 39, it says, And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Wow! What a powerful statement about Jesus. Think about that. A Roman centurion, it says. that This wasn't a religious man. This wasn't a weak man. This was a hardened soldier who had been in battle after battle after battle. A Roman centurion who had witnessed hundreds, if not thousands of crucifixions. This wasn't a special day. This was just another day for this guy, another day in the office. This was like every other day. But something was different this day. Something was different about Jesus. And this Roman centurion would never be the same. The centurion was close to Jesus. It says he stood right in front of the cross and he watched Jesus die. Anytime you get close to Jesus, you will begin to feel the power of the cross. It says this, when the Roman centurion saw Jesus and heard Jesus, his heart was changed forever towards God. That's what I want to happen in my life. I want when people get around me and they see me and they hear me, they feel something different and their hearts are changed towards God. When he saw how he died, when he heard the words, 
that Jesus spoke. This is fascinating to me. Jesus had the power to influence this man's life by the way he died. Jesus didn't preach an hour-long sermon while he was on the cross. Jesus didn't do any great miracles for all the people to see and believe while he was on the cross. You know, Jesus didn't call down angels from heaven to rescue him. Matter of fact, Jesus didn't even have a conversation with this soldier. He, he just died. But he died in a way that changed the heart of this centurion forever. I believe that Jesus is our example for everything in life. The patterns of his life are roadmaps for us to follow. And now we are once again seeing another example from Jesus. This time, Jesus is showing us how to die so that others may live. So what was it about Jesus' death that impacted this soldier's life? How did Jesus die? Here are a few things that I've noticed and some things I just want to pull out from our story tonight. An example for us on how to live. Number one is this. In this story, we see that Jesus took a stand for truth. Even though it could have got him killed, look at what it says in Mark 15, verse 1. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Jesus said, yes, it is as you say. The chief priests then accused him of many more things. Jesus never backed down from the truth. He never denied who he was, even when it wasn't convenient or what the crowd wanted to hear. Jesus boldly stood for truth when Jesus needed to. Jesus wasn't afraid of who he was. Jesus wasn't afraid of the message he had to share. And we shouldn't be afraid to stand up for truth either, especially in difficult times. I love what Martin Luther King Jr. said. He said this, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at the times of challenge and controversy. This was a tough moment for Jesus, but he took a stand for truth. He stood for what was right, even though everything in this situation was going wrong. Jesus wasn't ashamed of the gospel. And the Roman centurion, I believe, was paying attention to what he was saying. Romans 1.16 says this for us, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Jesus was not ashamed of the truth. He said, yep, I am. I am the king of the Jews. Number two is this. We see Jesus was strong enough to lay down his life. Mark 15.37 says, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. I like the way it reads in Luke 23, also in verse 46. It says, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what happened, praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. You know, there is a big difference between being killed and laying your life down. Jesus wasn't killed. Nobody murdered the Son of God. It wasn't even the nails that held Jesus to the cross. It wasn't the power of the crowd that day that forced Jesus to die. Don't be fooled. No one has the power to take away the life of Jesus. No, my friends, Jesus laid his life down. He willingly gave it all up for you and for me. John 10, 17 says this, The Father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it back up again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have the authority to lay it down when I want to. Jesus was not a criminal scared to die that day. He was the savior of the world choosing to lay his life down. And when they lied about him and they falsely accused him, he was choosing to lay his life down. When they beat him and they whipped his body, he was choosing to lay his life down. And when they nailed him to the cross to die a criminal's death, he was choosing to lay his life down. And Jesus was in complete control, surrendering it all for us. Can you imagine how different this must have been for the centurion? Jesus didn't fight back. Jesus wasn't gripped and paralyzed with fear. Jesus didn't beg for his life to be saved. Jesus embraced the cross for this is what he was born to do. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we need to learn to lay down our lives for others. 1 John 3, 16 says this, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Jesus was not afraid to stand up for what was right. 
Jesus was not afraid to lay down his life. And the last thing that I want to point out here about Jesus and how he died on this day is this. Jesus continued to act out of love and forgiveness. Luke 23 says this about Jesus on the cross in verse 33. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on the right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And then they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Those might just be the most powerful words in all of history. Father, forgive them. Can you imagine this Roman guard standing there, what he must have been thinking when he looked up at Jesus on the cross and he heard him say those words, Father, forgive them. Jesus didn't hold any grudges while he was suffering on the cross. He wasn't taking names and keeping records so he could, you know, go get even with people later on. Jesus loved them by forgiving them, the same people who were actually killing him. Wow. Talk about dying in a way that makes an impact on those who are watching, those around him. Jesus walked in truth. Jesus walked in love. And Jesus walked in forgiveness. And when he was finished dying on the cross, the Roman centurion, this pagan heathen man, believed that Jesus was the Son of God because of what he saw Jesus do and because of what he heard Jesus say. The final thought that I want to challenge us with tonight is this. Will the people that you're around believe in Jesus because of what they see and hear coming from you? Will you die daily to yourself in a way that others can live. At this time, I'm gonna dismiss you to your discussion groups. Thank you for listening to me. God bless.